He awoke slowly. The smell of roasted seasoned meat, smoky and sweet, clung stubbornly to his senses as consciousness seeped back into his mind. He had dreamt of a picnic with the aunties, Tante Bonegrater, Auntie Gangrene, and Auntie Dredgema... No. His anger roared back in as he remembered that Tante had said that Auntie D was dead. Dead and killed by his sister. He felt a burning at his back as his wings threatened to breach his skin and begin his defense transformation. No. He squeezed his eyes shut as he whispered to himself, Not yet. Tanti had told him to be careful because his sister had powerful friends. He was to get her alone and bring her to Tanti so she could watch him take his revenge for abandoning him. He owed her that much for taking him in, feeding him the best morsels, and teaching him and protecting him. And she and Auntie Gigi would be there to help if things went wrong. His anger remained, but the rage ebbed away with his efforts. He would be a good boy and do what Tanti said. They would all make her pay. Many times over the past few years, he had tried to remember his sister's name, to curse it. But he did not remember his own real name or features, let alone those of his sister. Sometimes he would get flashes of the farm or brief feelings of warmth or safety. But when he actively tried to recall anything about his family before his life with the aunties, all he could recall were taunts and neglect. The last time he had tried to remember his sister's face, he saw a headscarf. He saw walnut-colored skin. He saw eyes that were brown, no, blue blue, gray, and angry, and the face was sharp, and the skin was bluish, no, violet, and thick, ropey hair extended down and out and reached toward him to wrap him up and pull him toward Tanti's grinning shadow form. But the wide, jagged teeth would be forming a frown instead of her usual gleeful smirk. He would come to his senses in the middle of a task, such as locking a piglet into a cage as it wept for its mommy or daddy or whomever, or handing pies to Tanti as she bargained with customers. Tanti seemed intrigued when this happened. Normally, she would raise an eyebrow and smirk, but she never mentioned anything about the strange visions or the loss of memory. And he never said anything about it to her either. Once, he came to in a cave in a bog he had been exploring with Auntie D. They had been traveling to visit Tante B, but Auntie D decided to take the opportunity of being on land to investigate some promising areas. The marshy floor of the cave concealed remnants of ancient settlements and abandoned camps. Auntie Dee was prodding around in the debris of bones and rotted wood covered in silt and tatters of fabric and leather intertwined with frills of plump, watery grasses. She dredged through the muck and revealed a handful of crystals that sparkled in the pinkish bioluminescence cast by the lichen that pulsed like veins running through the cave walls. So, you have returned to the living, eh? She looked at him from the corner of her eye as she picked through the gems in her palm. What did you see? He knew her tone meant that she knew exactly what he saw. I saw 
Tanti, he said dejectedly. And what did you see the time before that? She examined one particular stone very closely. Tanti. She bent just slightly toward the brackish water. Her arms were almost long enough to allow her hands to touch the surface without stooping, and she swished the gems in it. A trail of shimmering blue followed her as the algae glowed in the wake. And the time before that? He hung his head. Answer me, child, she demanded, cocking her head, and the lichen in the closest cave wall flashed brightly, as if in response to her voice, but maybe it was an errant current or breeze. Tanti, he stuttered nervously. Auntie Gigi poked and scratched him when she was angry. Tanti slapped him, or wordlessly terrified him because of what he had seen her do to others. Auntie D was the only one that made him feel bad just because he had disappointed her. She sighed. Yes, and that is who you will always see. I do not know how many chances you have to learn your lesson. She turned directly toward him, glaring. So stop your foolishness before you do permanent damage to yourself. The cave around them shuddered, and the veins of lichen pulsed a deep fuchsia, and the water around their feet splashed and flared. He did not feel cold, but he shivered from the wave of her anger, and fought the instinct to back away. She sighed again as she walked toward him. A faint greenish-yellow glow beginning to emanate from her. She sometimes shone like that when they were combing the ocean floor and she knew he was scared. I am not vexed, child, she said soothingly as she approached. Sister B gave you to me because you had no value to her as she found you. The yellow teeth of her wide smile seemed more orange in the faint cave lighting. She took his hand, placed something into it, and closed his fingers around it. But you suit me just fine. I think she takes you away like this just to irritate me. She tapped his hand. Do not look at that unless I am gone. And I do mean gone. Sister B will not be happy with me, with either of us, if you do. It shall be our secret, hmm? He nodded, glad that she was not angry at him. And a present. None of the sisters had ever given him something of his own. Yes, auntie. Thank you, he said, a bit puzzled. Yes, well... The aura around her faded and vanished, and she turned her face away. We must continue on our way. Sister B needs you for another errand. The stagnant water quickened and began to flow like a stream deeper into the cave. This way. We will see one of her pets when we get near. She walked off resolutely, her skirts causing a glowing blue slick that washed before her. He hesitated just for a second and glanced at the small black coral box his favorite auntie had pressed into his hand and made their secret. He slipped it into the inside pocket of his shirt and followed her, hoping that whatever Tanti had in store would not take him away from Auntie D for too long. And now he lay in his hammock, turning her gift over and over in his fingers. The box was well made, the coral smooth and rich, but the style was unremarkable. Strangely, it retained the warmth of his body as if it were a part of him. He ran his finger along the line of hard wax 
that sealed it closed. Then, remembering Tanti's warning about crying for Auntie D, he fought back a tear and cracked the seal.